In the last video in this series, I showed you attachments to vertices and faces. Now it's time for attachment to curves. Unlike attachment to faces and vertices that can be faked with creative formulas entered as position parameters, there really is not a good substitute for attaching to a curve. The complexity of the formulas involved would simply get out of hand. It is fortunate then that the most common ways to add a curve to guide a model results in a singular object. As such, it is immune to being renumbered in a way that would trigger the topological naming problem. A sketch containing only a circle has only one edge. Its number can only be one. To get us started, I have pre-created a few objects. They're all sitting at the global origin unattached. I've made another funny sketch to indicate its local axes. The big arrow points up to the y-axis, and the triangle points up the x-axis. The circle surrounds the origin point. I'll just attach it to the circle now. As you can see, when a curve is the primary reference, we get a new class of mapping modes. It defaults to concentric. In other words, the origin of the sketch is coincident to the center of the curve. A little later, I'll show you how concentricity is applied to open curves. The other significant modes are various flavors of Frenet, sometimes pronounced Frenet, so named for Jean-Frédéric Frenet, who derived equations to determine the normal, tangent, and binormal vectors at any given point on a curve. The two letters after Frenet describe how the x and y axes of the attached object map to the curve, tangent, normal, or binormal. Tangent and normal are as you might expect within the plane of the curve at the attachment point. Binormal is along the plane z-axis. So Frenet NB puts the x-axis of our sketch normal to the curve and the y-axis binormal to the curve. Frenet TN, or tangent normal, will be a commonly used mode. There is no Frenet NT since you can have that by mapping TN and rotating the attached sketch 90 degrees about its z-axis. So using one of the Frenet modes gets our object attached to a curve, but then there's the minor matter of where along the curve it sits. One option is to set a secondary reference. FreeCAD will attempt to make an axis of the mapped object point to the secondary reference by moving the object along the curve. Take note that when it is not possible due to a limitation of the primary reference, you will be warned in the attachment dialog and the attachment will not take effect. Notably, not possible doesn't necessarily mean there exists no solution to the problem, only that Open Cascade, the underlying geometry engine, doesn't know how to solve it. Another option available when there is only a curve as a primary reference is the map path parameter. You can access that in the data pane under attachment. You might need to right click on attachment and check the show all box to see it. Its value is a float from 0 to 1 describing where on the curve the object should be placed using the selected mapping mode. For closed curves, it will actually allow values greater than 1 to be entered, but only the fractional part will have any meaning. Consider if you go around a circle one and a half times or just halfway around, you are in the same place. The map path parameter can also come into play for attachments to a compound curve, even an open curve in concentric mode. Here I have a continuous curve constructed of three arcs. I'll map the sketch to the curve in concentric mode. To better illustrate, I'll make the underlying construction visible. You can see that the sketch origin is placed at the center of one of the arcs. The map path parameter not only decides which arc center will be the attachment point, it also acts as a secondary reference as if there were an object at that point on the curve selected as the second reference. I'll put a little sphere there to make it easy to see. I've attached the sphere to the curve using Frenet NB and used the formula to make the sphere's map path parameter equal to that of the sketch. Now I'll run an animation macro to slowly increase the map path parameter so you can better see what's going on. Notice the parameter moves from one arc to the next, 
the concentric point moves to the center of that new arc. You can see that the y-axis of the sketch continues to point at the now not so imaginary point. Remember the sphere is not a secondary reference for the sketch, it's just an indicator of the map path parameter. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video or found it useful, please like, subscribe, and share. If there's anything you'd like to see covered here, please let me know in the comments below.